All right, guys, have you recently bought a plane like the Challenger or thought about it? Well, one thing you're worried about or wondering about is stalls in it. So I think today is a good day to go do stalls. A um, little hazy, uh, but it's not too bad. Today's video is actually supposed to be about going to 10,000 feet um, AGL, which for me would be 10,600 MSL because we're at 600 feet above sea level here. Uh, but I didn't wake up in time to beat the density altitude. I really don't think I could get there. Um, I'm gonna need, when I do that flight, I'm gonna need all the fuel I can get. Uh, Jason was telling me he thought it was gonna take five gallons to get up there. Um, I don't know, I'm gonna try, but not today. Today is stalls. Um, you know, I'm not gonna do anything. I've actually done stalls in the plane before, and it's pretty, pretty boring, actually. Uh, I tried very hard to get it to break and it just doesn't really want to. So we'll go up there today and I'll show you guys. The wind is coming from the south. You guys can't really tell, but uh, so we'll be doing all these maneuvers into the uh, into the southern wind aiming south. A um, few updates in the hangar here. The little baby birds have taken flight, but then mom decided to lay another egg. So I guess I need to come more often so I can get those moved out. Um, also, some things I'm going to be doing to the airplane. Uh, I have the soft seat still. I know what you're thinking, like, how could that be? Just like Mike thought. But yeah, I still have the fabric seat. So whenever someone's sitting here, they swoop down in here. And then those two things always come undone. And so they're sitting in this weird angle with their back against the bar. Um, so I have the seat kit from the factory. I just got to finish putting the rivets in and installing it and it comes with the hinge for the fuel door. That's the fuel door, but I don't think I'm going to keep it because it's not like the right size for mine. So I might just keep the back the way it is. I don't know. I'll figure that out later. Also, these are all, if you order from the factory, the, the bolt kits to replace all the bolts in your plane, um, like all the, the Roni bracket bolts, all these, everything, they come numbered. Um, and. Mike does a really good job of explaining to you which one's which, but I'm gonna make a video later on about all these. So uh, we'll be replacing everything. I literally have them all for the tail for everything. So all the new bolts for the plane. Um, one thing I'm gonna have to do is, these are probably have been here since the plane was originally built. So I'm, I'm replacing them. So I'm gonna have to figure out cutting this out, cleaning this all up, uh, replacing these bolts. I believe the guy I bought it from replaced that. So, um, so that's a little bit of housekeeping here. Oh, guys, look at these. Um, I, I got these from a guy, believe it or not, uh, Jason actually sent me the ad from Cotton Patch and it was, it turns out it was right next to where I live. So I messaged a guy and we worked out a deal and I got those tanks. Those tanks are gonna be long range tanks that are gonna be able to be installed in the plane right here. Um, not sure how I'm gonna do it yet. I had thought that could be gravity feed, but then I was kind of looking like, I'm like, nah. It's gonna need a fuel pump probably, so I'm gonna have to pump them in. Mike from the factory, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. He doesn't like when we add weight to our planes or anything. And then for the record, it's not gonna be on there all the time. Those tanks are, are just for when I'm going uh, somewhere where I need extra fuel. You know, they have they have, uh, hold five gallons a piece, so I'll probably put like four gallons in them and uh, yeah, give me nine more gallons. Freeze up my back seat, or it makes it to where I can even put that much more fuel in there. <clears throat> that being said, also, guys, I am officially a uh, Giant Loop. I am officially a affiliate of Giant Loop. Um, what that means is that if you are interested in those bags, there's a link down in the description, and you can click on it. It'll say Giant Loop. And if you order from them, like, for example, if five people order these bags, then I can get one for free. So I have a three-gallon bag there, which I love, and then I want to get a couple five-gallon bags just to have... Um, I think they're great. Uh, it's, the company is amazing. You email them, they just boom, they email you right back. Uh, they're really awesome. So yeah, so I'm an affiliate for that. Um, yeah, so it, you do make a little percentage, but I would just parlay the percentage into buying uh, Giant Loop Bags. So if you're interested in those, down in the link. Also down in the link, if you're really feeling generous, you know, I'm trying to build this channel, so I put together an Amazon wish list, but a lot of that stuff's really expensive. So I just did it because someone suggested it to me. They're like, hey, you don't make money doing this. You might as well put a link down there and see if anybody wants to contribute. If somebody wants to buy one of those things and like sponsor a video, I'll gladly uh, shout you out or whatever. Not that I get a ton of views, but, <clears throat> but you know, I enjoy doing it and I want to keep doing it. And to keep doing it and doing it better, I need more things. So 
Um, so yeah, that wish list is in the description as well. Also, while you're here, um, it's free, it's easy. Just hit the like button really quick because if you hit the like button, that puts me into the algorithm and that makes it a lot easier for the videos to get seen. Um, and also I had a video the other day come out um, about ultralights and the five you know things I think people should take into consideration if they're gonna buy them or buy one. And that video is like at 19,000 views or something now and I've gotten a lot of messages on it. And I will say, guys, that was an opinion piece video. Most of it's been positive. Um, that was 100% an opinion piece video. So um, I was wrong about the airspace stuff, about saying you can't fly in the mode C veil and stuff, like which is below the Bravo. There's a lot of laws in aviation. And so you can actually fly in those areas, uh, but unless, as long as it's not densely populated and blah, blah, blah. My personal opinion is you should not. You should receive training for a sport or private pilot before you go into those areas, regardless of what the law says. Because the reality is you are within feet of multiple other aircraft. And so you really need to know what you're doing up there. So. And that's not to degrade anybody. That's just to say it's just not safe. You know, I wouldn't even take my plane in there. Matter of fact, I had to get my plane out of the Bravo airspace in Houston. So we had to go through this whole calling, you know, calling and getting permission and then calling when we got out and blah, blah, blah. So it's definitely not something that you should do if you're an ultra person. Now, can you? I guess in certain areas you can, as long as it's not densely populated. Uh, so anyways, that video was mostly an opinion piece. That was me just telling you how I feel about the ultralight world stuff, which I love it. I think it's great. And I want more of you to do it, which is why I'm making these videos. So the next video I make after this one's going to be about, uh, actually it might even put it out before this one, but it basically is going to be about ownership and why they trade hands so much. So, um, I'm going to finish getting pre-flighted here and, oh, one other thing too. Sorry. We'll get to stalls here. I promise. I keep on getting asked about my radio setup and, I, and I've shown it before, but I'm gonna show it again. I have the Yaesu 750 Pro X, or excuse me, 550 Pro X. And it is, this is an antenna that is going to right there where that thing is. What are those things called? I don't know, I just realized it was there. I haven't, I haven't done my full pre-flight yet, so. And it is attached, let me see if you can see. There's a wire up there that's attached to it and the wire comes down here and the antenna plugs in, it makes this thing super strong. I am literally hearing 50 miles away from here and people hear me crystal clear and it's all because of that. Um, and there is a trick to making it work really good. If you already have this setup and it's not working very good, then you probably need to put that aluminum foil tape uh, touching your antenna up there and grounding it better because that seemed to make a really huge difference. As you can see, it's wired into two wires. The, it's a regular aviation plug-in and it's going to these two wires which work their way all the way up, oops, all the way up into here, all the way over to my comm box. And my, my comm box is a Sigtronix uh, Transcom 2, and it works great. It is hardwired, so this has a 12 volt to the airplane, so I don't ever have to change batteries out on it or anything. Then it goes to my two wires, which one of them is a mic, and one of them is the uh, um, GoPro. And so I have to plug into the GoPro with my camera and then plug into this one. So my headset actually plugs in down here, but you can, if you're not making videos, you could just go straight to it like this, or you still need a mic. And that's the other thing too, this mic is just a button mic. I have it Velcroed down there and it goes down up under and up through here, it's plugged in and then I plug into it, so. If you want more information on that, I can do more, but that's pretty much the whole situation. Uh, if that helps, I hope that helps for you. So now I've been rambling on. Let me get this thing pre-flighted and let's go do some stalls. out a clamp or something I could put on that thing where it just holds it in the perfect spot. 1230. All right. So guys, we're going to go do some stalls. We're just going to stay local. Um, and um, this is a requested video, by the way. I've had multiple people ask me about stalls. I've done stalls before, but we'll go do them again.
Um, when I'm asked, when should I worry about stalls? Like, and just so you guys know, I'm not an instructor yet. I am working on it, but I am not an instructor yet. Um, so don't take this as uh, instruction. Just take it as knowledge or me just talking about what I'm doing. Um, definitely consult your CFI on uh, on what he or she would like you to do and how to do it. Every airplane's different. Um, not really, but like, I mean they are. They all have different tendencies and things like that, but they say there's someone flying over now. But one thing that uh, I get asked is when should I worry, or when should, oh crap. When, when should I worry about stalls? And realistically, guys, the answer to that is always. I find that, uh, um, People, also, one one thing that I would say to stay aware of is when you're in the downwind. And I say that because I find that when I'm downwind in my airplane, or even like in Robert's Challenger 1 and stuff, I have far less authority. You know, if you're in the downwind, and say, for example, you have like a 20, 20 knot wind, which you probably wouldn't fly in that, but say it came up out of nowhere. If you're going 50 airspeed, downwind and you're going 70 miles an hour over the ground your brain thinks you're going too fast for your downwind leg so what you do is you end up oh crap there's a rope there hope i can get over that rope but what you end up doing is uh you end up uh trying to slow down but but you shouldn't because you want to keep the authority you have with your your uh control surfaces you want to keep power in but yes you're going to be hauling butt your airspeed's gonna be low, but your ground speed's gonna be high. When you turn base, then you're fighting it, you're kinda crabbing, then you turn final, you're gonna come to a stop. stop. And Vakamu, Yellow Experimental 685 Bravo is gonna back taxi runway 18, Vakamu. I don't see anybody in the area, the coast is perfectly clear. I hope we make it over this white line pretty good, I'm sure we will. We will watch it. They are putting irrigation in so that we will have a beautiful runway here. Oh, that's annoying. Hopefully my little tailwheel doesn't catch it. There we go. Anyways, you have to override that part of your brain and say, okay, I'm going fast now, but I have authority. When I turn base and then I turn final, I'm going to slow down because it's like when you, in this airplane, it's like when you have, you know in your car, when you have like a quarter tank of gas, and, or like a half a tank, and then all, like the first half a tank, it lasts you forever, you're so happy, you're lasting all this time. Oh, look at this fuel, it's so long. And then it gets a half a tank, and then it's just like, bye, I'm empty. And then you're at a gas station. Uh, these airplanes are like that with speed. So, you know, yeah, it's not gonna stall until, you know, high 30s, low 40s, but when you're at 50, it gets there awfully quick. Kinda like your fuel tank, you know? It did show a little low turbulence, so we're going to see what that's like up there and kind of make a decision from there. Alright guys, the coast is clear, fuel pump is on, mags were good, everything looks good. I have one EGT that's a little lower than the other one for some reason, but it is what it is. And Vakamu Yellow Experimental 685 Bravo is departing runway 18, and uh, we'll be uh, right traffic, Vakamu. looking good. I like to depart where the more fields are. The wind's coming from and the south. Atlanta County traffic, uh, Cherokee 402, Alpha Golf is 10. Alright, I'm, normally I wouldn't do this, but I'm switching the channel because 123 is the most popular channel over here. So we're going to aim into the wind and get some altitude. We'll probably get up to 2,500. It's really hazy up here today. 
I'll pull the power back to 6,000. We'll take our time getting up there. Uh, and we'll just continue to talk about the stalls uh, or about the airplane characteristics. But, uh, man, I'm glad I didn't try the 10,000 today. I can tell I'm on the struggle bus. I'm only at 1,200 feet. But, uh, yeah, so I'm on 123.45 now. We'll see what happens. I'm watching my iPad. I'm watching around. Be very vigilant. There's actually this area over here that's a bunch of large fields. It's a, a farm, and I like to do stuff over there. It's kind of like unlimited options, you know? If you have something like that, use it, because you never know. Guys, I'm starting down, and I'm switching over to 122.7. And of course, we'll do. And of course, there's people talking on 123.45, because why would there be? You should always be thinking about stalls. And uh, they can and will happen. Obviously, the most dangerous stalls are going to be in the pattern. And, uh, yeah, that's scary. And, uh, yeah. Moral of the story is it has happened to me, so it can happen to anybody um, in an ultralight. So, luckily nothing happened. I just recovered, but, geez. Scary stuff, guys. Well, our ground speed's a whopping 37 miles an hour. Our airspeed's 55, so as you can tell, it's a windy one up here, guys. And it's actually coming from that direction. It's kind of pushing me this way. So here in a second, I'm going to aim into it. We're almost at 2,000. And then we will do some stalls. Probably not the best idea when it's this windy. And honestly, the video is going to be kind of boring because stalls are kind of boring most of the time, hopefully, in the Challenger. Ah. The wind is pushing my wing, my left wing over. These guys are having a jolly time, I see. I don't really need to hear that. Can you get, hopefully you guys can still hear me if I turn that down. I think you can. I don't need to hear the 123.45 stuff. Our ground speed is 26 miles an hour. All right, now we're into the wind. It's a grass strip, I'm thinking of. It was in Our ground yeah, speed is 25. Like over one end of the runway somewhat. We'll pull the nose up a little bit here. 40. We're at 40 airspeed. 30. 36. 36. 35. Uh, back up to 40. I'll pull the power back a little bit so we can get her to stall here. And 34, there it goes. So recover the stall. In the, in the Challenger, you don't have to be as aggressive. Uh, I mean, you should go full power and recover, nose down, the airspeed up, pull back. Okay, I'm turning that down. So, I'll do that again. So I'm gonna pull my power back, nose up, I'm into the wind. Actually, I'm not as into the wind now, let's see. Into the wind here, here we go. Oh yeah, <laughs> so we're into the wind, we're kind of getting pushed that way. Now when, you, uh, when you're when you in the stall, you want to use your rudders, not your stick. So there we go, pulling the power back, we're at 37 already. 35, 34, and boom, there it goes. It's very uneventful, guys. It's very uneventful. It's it's almost nothing. Golly, I'm getting beat up out here. Well, there's a couple of stalls for you guys. I'm getting beat up, and it's not much fun when you get beat up, so we're gonna head back to the airport. Um, that was only two. I only lost like 50, 100 feet. It was super uneventful, guys. Um, I would do more except for it's just so it's turbulent, and the wind is more than I would like for something like this. So I would definitely uh, come back, and maybe we'll do this video again. I just wanted to kind of give you guys an idea of what it's like. It's not, it's uneventful. It's not a big deal. And, uh, yeah, it can be fun if you want it to be, you know? I was going to do a power, a full power on one, but in this wind and turbulence, I don't want to mess with something like that, you know, stressing the plane out. So we'll do that on the next one. Um, I'm about to land and do a video about 
Um, if I, it might already be up, but I'm gonna do a video about someone's talking. Uh, I'm gonna do a video about the things that people are most most scared of with planes like this. If you haven't yet, go back and watch that. Guys, like, share, subscribe. Please like, at a minimum, like the video. I know I didn't do a lot of stalls, but bear with me here. It's turbulent, and uh, the weather's not all that great. So um, we will do it much better next time. But for now, we're going to be safe, and we're going to land, because this just isn't the... Oh, Jesus. This just isn't the right environment for uh, what we're doing. So... Back to the airport we go. Yeah, it, it got pretty, uh, you, that, that's another thing too, guys. GoPros, they don't show you the truth. They don't give you the, the real situation. So, although I'm getting beat up, especially the other, like this direction, because I'm in like a downwind, cross, cross downwind, um, Yeah, when you're getting beat up, it's just not fun. Especially if you're trying to do stalls and stuff, so. But I want to put some videos out. I have a lot more subscribers now from, from some videos. And so I want to try to keep it that way, you know? Um, and as you can see, the plane makes pretty rapid sudden movements on its own. Mostly because I wasn't carrying power. So. I'm going to carry more power because I'm in a tailwind, so I was doing 70 miles an hour at 5,000 RPMs. Let me switch over here. Unfortunately, this is going to get annoying. And Vakamu, yellow experimental 685, probably is going to be right downwind for runway 18, Vakamu. 2,000 feet circling the VOR. Uh, see, I was stepping on somebody. Yeah, I'm getting beat up. That's the only downside with ownership of an airplane like this, guys. You want something like this? Like if this was a true ultralight? Uh, 250 pound true ultralight? This flight wouldn't even be able to happen right now, realistically, with any fun, you know? It's still summertime, guys. The density altitude has been getting up to like 3,300. The temps have been getting at over 100, like 101. So that's why I wanted to get out here early and get you guys a video. Something to me in the plane. Uh, the last video, a couple videos, I, well, actually, I was in the plane the last video. Well, you know, I just want to put my money where my mouth is. We're entering a high pattern here, a high base. This is a situation where I'm in the downwind, like I was telling you about. And so I'm not carrying, I'm carrying 5,000 RPMs. I'm going, my ground speed's 70, but I'm going 55. So we're going to turn into it, nose down, keep our authority. Now we're uh, in our uh, base leg here. And Vakamu, Yellow Experimental 635 Bravo is right base for 18 Vakamu. Well, I'm leaving that off now. I'm just going to focus on my landing here. So I'm getting beat up. Now, I am high enough to where. If I lost the engine, I'd probably still make it, but you got to remember, I'm turning into a, a 12 to 15 mile an hour headwind. So, make sure you're carrying that power. Keeping your nose down, you know, that'll limit your, uh, your lowering your angle of attack will limit your possibility of stalling. And the wind's kind of pushing this direction. Actually, the sock shows that way, but up here it's more this way. Um... I don't land at the beginning part of the runway, guys. I land kind of in the middle. All right, so we are at a point of no problem now. If we lost the engine, whatever. Uh, that's something I want to talk about in the next video is, you know, when you pull the throttle back on a two-stroke, losing the engine's possible, guys. See, like, right there, just kind of ball. That'll be in the next video. We'll talk about that, though. I carried a little bit of power into that landing, mostly because there's, you know, some wind and I wanted to have full authority of the landing, so. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Sorry that was a lackluster video, but I'm, I'm going to do my best to produce. And also, um, the adventure and Aviation Adventure Boys, guys, as soon as 
the summertime is over, that is our plan. Me and, me and Justice especially because Jonah has a job, but I will get Jonah out there and maybe we'll fly over and do some disc golf in the airplane. And so we have some really cool ideas, camping. So yeah, if you haven't yet, uh, subscribe. Sorry I'm saying that so much. Uh, but I've just made a decision recently to put a lot more effort into content for you guys. So if you could subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. It's in, and liking is free, subscribing is free. You just gotta have, hit the subscribe button and log in. So, all right guys, I'm gonna go make this other video. Thank you.